What is going on YouTube Nation? This is Dark Dividend. If you guys are new to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. So I'm going to reveal to you some of my plans with M1 Finance and E-Trade. And my master plan isn't ready yet, but it's just starting. And I'm very excited to really discuss that with you guys. And really, this was a beautiful month for dividends. So I want to reveal that to you guys, my E-Trade and M1 Finance dividend portfolio. And I also have some strategies that I plan on posting this week, as well as doing some reviews on some really uh, tight rates. So again, if you're new to this YouTube channel, I would hit the subscribe button. I don't give financial advice for entertainment purposes, only disclaimer in the description, but I show you my dividend investing journey, and I give you my thought process kind of when it comes to reviewing dividend stocks, the pros, the cons, even ETFs. So let's check my dividend income out right now. So here's my E-Trade dividend portfolio. My account is $44,367.38, and I lost $5,130.59. That's negative 10.37. I'm not too upset because, again, you know, I'm going to be buying dividend stocks. Actually, I'll show you my performance real quick. So in the past three years since I started this account, my... Uh, percentage, my account performance was 71.15%. NASDAQ was 41.60%. The S&P was 46.98%. And the Dow Jones Industrial Average was 43.42%. So I am winning right now, which is kind of crazy. I don't think that'll be there in the long run. But, you know, it's do looking pretty good against the S&P, NASDAQ, and Dow Jones Industrial Average right now. And all I'm doing is buying dividend stocks. Now, let's go to my dividend portfolio. So I'm just going to show you my numbers and allocation of my dividend stocks. Arbor Realty Trust, I have 564. Uh, Satchem, I have 279. Key Corp, 277. Gain, 192. Uh, SQFT, SQFT, Presido Property Trust, 183. TSLY, I'm at 161 right now now this is the big master plan i'll reveal to you that with you guys realty income 134 uh vtrs 127 horizon uh technology 126 99 epr properties 125 main street capital 118 huntington bank shares 104 it's kind of like a uh little like spin-off thing that happened with presido um this is i'm just going to let it sit here uh, OCSL 77, Scion 62, Franklin Resources 58, I need to get to 100, GMRE 54, Conagra Brands 33, NLCP 22, APLY 21, who knows what will happen, that's why I'm having it sit there, Paramount 367, and New Tech Capital 608. Paramount, I'm going to let it sit here for a little bit, and I may just throw it into APLY. i got to see what's going on with these guys and uh, go from there. This could be an options stock in the future. I need to learn how to do options. So let's go over my dividend income for this month, or actually April, which is very exciting. So overall, this was not a bad month for E-Trade. But again, I need to really start getting to 100 shares with some of these dividend stocks. So Huntington Bank shares 1601, Paramount 363, Global Medical REIT 1115, Franklin Resources 1732, Horizon Technology Finance Corp 1384, Main Street Capital 2643, I got New Tech 108. Again, I'm holding that and seeing what's going on. Uh, New Lake Capital Partners, that is an OTC uh, marijuana or Mary Jane REIT at 858. EPR Properties, 3421. Uh, Yield Max, again, the Covered Call, ETF 965. Satchem Capital Corp, 3635. Gladstone Investment Corp was 1533. So on this one, I got a total of $227.82. Now, my goals are, again, to load up on these Covered Call ETFs so I can start buying more of these dividend growth stocks. So 
what I'm going to have, what I'm going to do is TSLY. I'm going to load up on those guys, get enough income from TSLY so I can start buying APLY and letting a domino effect start kicking in. That way I can get to maybe about a hundred, hundred to four hundred dollars a month on these covered call ETFs, and I can use their income to buy the other covered call ETFs and then use that income eventually to start buying dividend stocks. So that's my strategy with these covered call ETFs, specifically on E-Trade. I feel pretty confident in that. Again, taxes might be a different story, but I wanted to reveal to you my dividend income on there. Now, M1 Finance was turbocharged, and I'm going to go over that with you guys. So right now, the Death Star is at 56329.10. So I'm going to go over my holdings probably in the future, but I want to show you my dividend income and what my strategy is with M1 Finance because this was a beautiful month. So I'm going to go over my uh, dividend income with these guys and explain to you what I plan on doing with my strategy. So I'm going to start with Coca-Cola. I made 284, Regions Financial, I made 1240, FSK, FS, KKR Capital Corp, I made 1745, VC Properties, I made 1657. So Zim, I ca had to calculate everything because there was some... Uh, you know, like taxes, and I made a total of $213.71. Again, this is nice with Zim because the nice, you know, every quarter I can just get like some passive income, some crazy passive income from these guys. Now, they're not the most reliable dividend stock, but again, their earnings and their uh, passive income that they distribute for me for my dividend portfolio is very exciting and it could be an opportunity to turbocharge my dividend portfolio so that's what excites me a lot about zim integrated uh shipping services kilroy realty 1659 medical property trust i had to add that up i was 506 remember i sold those guys um for taking a tax hit and then going from there afc gamma 17 cents or I'm excuse me, seventeen dollars and ten cents. Agree Realty Corp. Forty-eight cents. I need a lot more with those guys. Care Trust REIT two eighty-nine. Reefy Chicago Atlantic Real Estate Finance. That's a mortgage-backed real estate investment trust. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Innovative Industrial Properties thirty-one fifty-nine. Alrop Capital Corporation twelve seventeen. Spirit Realty Capital twenty-three twenty-four. Trinity Capital was a big one. That was, it looks like 3087. I had to calculate that. Fifth Bank Corp 344 SLG Green Realty. I actually sold them and LTC properties. I'm going to have to consider putting those guys in um, E Trade individually so I can earn that passive income from those guys and probably use that dividend income and start buying other dividend stocks. That's kind of my strategy that I'm thinking with SLG in LTC properties. Once I get enough to start really getting um, passive income from those guys and use their dividend income to buy other dividend stocks. Stag Industrial, 67 cents. Uh, same thing with SLG Green Realty, 27 cents. Bright Spire Capital, I made 437. Cube Smart, I made 1562. Aries uh, Commercial, I made 763. Keenan Holdings, I need to really pay attention to these guys. There's some potential with these guys. I may do a future video. So I made 485 with them. Bank OZK, uh, $3. McCormick, 548. Blackstone Secure Lending Fund, 1312. Altria, 3263. LTC Properties, 48 cents. Rhythm Capital, 414. And Ready Capital Court, 542. So you're starting to see really the dividend growth kick in and i cannot wait to get to maybe 100 to 200 shares of cube smart really starting to do some damage so spirit realty capital uh, owl rock capital corp there's a lot of potential mccormick so what my goals are with uh, a lot of these reits high income real estate investment trust i want to use that dividend income to buy dividend growth stocks like mccormick like uh, coca-cola like the other ones. Now, Abby, I ended up dropping. I'll probably, what I plan on doing is messing around with those guys, uh, either with Weeble or I have nothing wrong against Abby. It's just I need enough passive income to start buying those guys. Uh, one thing with Altria, I did post a video. You know, their earnings wasn't too attractive. 
Now, are they going to hike their dividend? They have a little bit of a reputation of hiking their dividend. So are they going to be in trouble or not? That's going to be the big question. So my dividend income was $517.36. I made a total of $745.18 this past month. So the previous month, I made around $800 or so. dollars. The potential is going to be with these covered call ETFs. I'm, I'm looking at, honestly, on M1 Finance, it, there's going to get a point where I'm just going to let it fly and I don't have to throw any money in there. Now, that was attractive at $517.36. I want to have enough confidence to where I'm making a consistent $2,000 a month on passive income and reinvesting the dividends and never touching it again. So I'm getting close to that, but I'm not to where I want to be. And I want to at least get to 100 to 200 shares in many of these dividend stocks and go from there because I'm going to show you a few things. So right now I'm at Regions Financial at 78 shares, Trinity Capital at 77, ARC at 77, Bearings BDC at 60, Hercules Capital at 59, EPD Enterprise Products at 59, Flowers at 53, All Rock Capital Corp at 49, AFCG Gamma, and Zim. I'm considering, you know, hopefully I can get to maybe 100 shares with Zim in the future and see what happens because, you know, there's a lot of opportunities with Zim. It's a scatter bomb effect. I wouldn't completely rely on Zim integrated services for uh, passive income. Now, VC Properties is another one. If I get to 100 to 200 shares in Aries Commercial one, that's going to be pretty serious. British American Tobacco, I don't know about the reliability of those guys. You know, they are a little bit of a scatter bomb with their dividend growth. So, um, a little iffy still on those guys. Walgreens Boot Alliance, I'm at 40 shares. So, Jackson Financial is another one that can do some damage. Spirit Realty Capital, I need to get up to at least 100 or more. Uh, National Storage, NSA, there's a lot of potential. And Ally, Need to get to maybe about 400 and feel pretty good about that. Altria, I may change the distribution to them to 1% once I get to 100 shares. I don't know how their dividend growth will be. I don't feel 100% confident in their dividend growth. And then CubeSmart, I'm at 31. That's not where I want to be with these guys. I want to be a lot higher especially gaming and leisure properties and Wendy's. I want to get to at least 400 and I'll feel really good. UVV, that's another one. Kinder Morgan, Tyson Foods. Again, so these income stocks up here, are. I'm planning on using that income from those stocks to buy these stocks. And then once these guys start really ramping up, that's when I'm going to feel really good because these guys have consistent dividend growth the passive income from my high yield REITs, I won't have to touch anything because again, once I start making you know two thousand dollars a month um, each w with these this passive income and M1 finance, I'm going to feel very confident to never even put a dollar in again because the dividends are going to do that. Now the other thing is the covered call ETFs could be an option to throw in there in Jeppy and JEPQ to conf you know to um, compensate that dividend growth because if I get that type of income you know with the covered call ETFs never touch them again reinvest sure taxes suck but guess what you're gonna pay taxes if you're making a lot of money anyways so that's kind of my strategy right now so if you're new to this YouTube channel make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so don't miss future videos let me know what your thoughts are regarding my dividend investing strategy right now and how I'm doing. I'm going to try to squeeze in a video later for you guys. So make sure you hit that notification bell after you subscribe and keep an eye on my channel daily. Take care.